Hey everyone, welcome back. So today I've got another hilarious book to make you laugh. Or kind of, I'm a little torn on this one. It's a new author that is always comes up as the recommendations of, you love Kristen for more? Check this one out. And I can kind of see where that comes from. The humor is definitely all over the place wacky, but the plot was a little convoluted. So what I've got for you is Pineapple Grenade by Tim Dorsey. And apparently this is well on into the series and looking at the reviews on Goodreads, it seems to kind of line up with what I found is this isn't the best book in the series, which actually gives me a lot of hope because I loved the first half of it. And by the end, I'm just like, yeah, we'll go with whatever they say happened, happened because there's been so many double and triple and quadruple crosses and what the hecks that I'm not sure what's going on. But basically what this story is, is we have this guy, Sergey Storm, who is in uh, Florida. So, you know, if you think politicians are honest and like the best people in the world and nothing weird ever goes on in Florida, they're just the best, most normal people you're not gonna like this book because he makes fun of all of that. <laughs> so, heads up, this is already, either you're gonna go, yup, or excuse me, I don't think so. And it's just gonna make you mad. And I actually, the sub is I had to look at when this was published because I have met some people that are like this. I met a dozen of those guys before my first break. Oh crap, this is over a decade old. <laughs> And they're still nuts. But he is... Well, the different branches of the CIA think... Well, I say different branches, it's different groups backstabbing each other. All think he's working for the other side. And really, he's just a serial killer that has really weird off-the-wall methods of getting rid of people that... Well, okay, yeah, they were bad people that they need to be dealt with, but he'll murder people for carjackings. <laughs> that, that's a very bad thing to do, but I think his, you know, methods might be a little over the top. <laughs> but the way he's, he does it is, it's different every time, and he has so much fun. But my favorite is how he becomes a spy, as he's watched a ton of movies and so he's just going to all of these consulates, taking pictures and sticking, you know, lemon juice written notes under their doors or handing them to their secretaries. Like, eventually one of them will hire me. It's like, oh, they yelled at me and threw me out of the consulate. That means they just hired me. I don't know what my mission is yet, but I'm a spy because if they told me they hired me, then I wouldn't be. It's totally in the movies. And apparently that's very believable because we have these two CIA groups that are being, we need to spy on and screw over this other group because that's what they're doing to us and whoever one spies on the other one the most gets to win and gets rid of the other one. It's all about job security. We're just watching ourselves. And so I was like, well, and you know, he has his partner called uh, Coleman who is just, uh, how do I put this to not get bleeped? Um, he is pharmaceutically enhanced at all times or unenhanced depending on how you look at it because the brain is not functioning properly at all dude's nuts <laughs> but he he's he's fun he has no idea what's going on but he he's fun he just kind of goes along for the ride and causes more trouble and at one point it's called an infant in traffic essentially because he's i looked away for a you know, quarter of a second oh crap but, and so he's just following Sergey along and yeah, Sergey, well, of course I'm a spy. They threw me out. And we get the CIA guy who goes, well, duh, they just hired me their spy. Everybody knows if they kick you out, that means they hired you. Haven't you ever watched a movie? And that's where he gets all his ideas, all his lines. And he's like, oh, they're oblivious here. I need to kill everybody to save my city. I mean, we had something blow up right outside the airport and nobody even batted an eye. And what it was, was a Ferrari being taken out by an RPG from some guys that are 
working but not working with the CIA, or at least some crooked parts of it, and their idiot hanger on, <laughs> that he needed to test out the RPGs and accidentally choke out their, yo know, head evil guy's Ferrari. <laughs> Oops. Because he might have been on something that do you, you don't normally grow around here to, you know, make for a good day. Something from a Johnny Depp movie, if you will. <laughs> and so this goes along as this idiot is like, we can't fire him because the general back home in this really tiny Latin country, yo, know, loves him. And we're having a summit of all the Latin countries here in Miami. So, you know, we just pass them around to different jobs, make people put up with them. And, you know, some idiots try to carjack the president of this one little country. And Sergey foils it and then tells him, oh, yeah, I I'm your new head of security, you know. And everybody, including the president of this country, believes him. So he just runs with it and just says the most outrageous things that make literally no sense, and they just go, mm-hmm, sure, we're crazy enough that that works, because we kind of are no idea what's going on. Because basically, what it starts off is there's some crooked arms deals going on, and we're not sure which CIA group, or if both CIA groups are involved with arming this country to take out rebels that aren't really rebels, they're actually other agents. They want to, you know, like, kind of look like there's something going on so they can get money for it. So that it actually goes to them. So everybody is double-crossing everybody but thinks that they're the good ones and the only ones smart enough to be pulling this off. And Sergei's just so genius that they can't figure it out. Like, he's super top-secret spy. And at some point, like, there, so they get the CIA following him. It's like, oh, well, he talked to this guy in a bar. So, oh, crap, now this group is involved. Everybody he talks to is involved in this ever-convoluted plot. And that's, I mean, that's one of the parts that I enjoy is just seeing how stupid people are and what he will come up with or what he will do next. But trying to actually follow it. Like, who is actually the good guy? What's actually going on? Like, Okay, are there act is there a single real bad guy or is it just yo know, crooked yo know, government folks trying to line their pockets and being conned by this other guy that's lining their pockets off of them because they're dumb as a box of rocks? I'm not really sure. I even by the end I never quite figured out. Like, well, they said that this one person was one thing and this other person was something else. And I will let you read that, because I just went, okay, yep, they said that's what it is, it is what it is, because their method of figuring it out made no sense. Everyone like, oh, this is what happened. Well, that didn't go as planned, so really, that, that means that's this thing, so we need to go do this, and look like we're in this other plot, and it just keeps going that way, and in that sense, I hated it, like, I mean, I get a few twists and turns, so you don't know who the real bad guy is and how they're going to catch him before you get almost to the end. But the, this one, I, I never could figure out anything, and I don't think they actually did either. I think he was just going, he wanted to say something happened, and there was so much going on that you would need to draw up some diagrams, or at least I needed to, but I wasn't going to. That takes the fun out of it. I just let them run wild with it and then just enjoy all the mess that they get themselves into and all the idiot things that folks go. They go, yep, he totally knows what he's doing. He was sanctioned for that. But no, like, he's just running off on his own and dragging people into it and getting credit for things that he didn't do. Or it's getting credit as this was sanctioned instead of just, he's just... You know, vigilante nuts. <laughs> like, some of the ways that he does things is... Eh, I could see this being, like, some TV show craziness. <laughs> and, 
Um, he does mention Burn Notice several times, and I don't know if any of y'all know that show, but definitely you need to watch it. It's a basically a burned CIA agent having fun blowing stuff up and getting into trouble, and we do have a burned agent at one point in this book that is gets pulled into the craziness. <laughs> so yeah, it's they're both they're fun and bad at the same time but so long as you can just shut your brain off just go yep sure this happened this is what's going on just nod your head and agree with that instead of trying to figure out how any of this makes sense and it's really fun oh my goodness the guy is there's no other word for it except for insane vigilante he should be locked up in multiple places <laughs> But since you don't have to deal with him, he's just on the page. Oh my gosh, he is so much fun. I love his lines and just his reasoning for things and how ev everybody goes along with it. One of my favorite comedians is Christopher Titus. And I forget which special it's in, but he says something that is perfectly sums up Sarah Gay's characters. You know, if you're normal, the crowd will accept you. If you're insane, they'll make you their leader. And that's exactly what's going on in this book. It is, it's so true, and I love it. I love how insane he is. But I have to knock it three stars because I couldn't follow what was actually going on with the plot. I was just strictly enjoying the characters. So if you need a plot-driven book, avoid it. If you want characters and craziness and comedy... He's for you. I'm going to try to find some other books in this series and see if they're along the same lines. So I hope you enjoy this. I hope this helps you make a decision what to read and get some more laughs in your life. And I will see you next time. Bye. Happy reading.